Hi there, I'm Merrick Claussen. I'm a managing partner at CG Life. I'm here at Biotech Showcase in San Francisco where the worlds of biotech and investment come together every year to really set the tone for what lies ahead in life sciences. I'm joined today by Bob Ward, uh, the uh, chairman and CEO of Elax Pharmaceuticals. Bob, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to talk with you. Thank you. Maybe we could start, just uh, tell us a little bit about Elax Pharmaceuticals and what you're doing. Yeah, Elox Pharmaceuticals is a clinical stage biotech company advancing a new therapeutic in cystic fibrosis that treats those patients that are outside the current therapeutic footprint. So we're the most advanced program focusing in on the nonsense mutation segment. And just today, we had a chance to share the t positive top line data from our cystinosis program. And this year, we're continuing to advance new molecules for autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, mm -hmm. and also for ocular disorders. That's great. Can you tell us a little bit uh, a little bit more detail about the data that was just announced today? Yes, in cystinosis, it's an ultra-rare disorder where there's a transporter that's missing, so patients are unable to clear cysteine out of their cells. Mm -hmm. So we use three different doses to look at reductions in white blood cell cysteine. We we're very pleased that the drug showed substantial biologic activity and we're looking now to advance to our next cohort of patients and evaluating whether we'll expand the treatment period as we move into our second cohort in cystinosis. That's great. Obviously, it's an exciting year then for, for ELOX. What's the, looking the other way, what's sort of one of the biggest challenges that the company is looking at this year or over the next few years in its development? Well, we're thrilled to be working in some really exciting categories. And as we drive innovation for a sustained release in the ocular program, for advancing clinical models and autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, that we continue to attract top quality talent. We've been fortunate to have some scientists join us who've really changed the way we do science and made a big impact on the company. Uh, obviously, we just came from a, a plenary lunch session. You were on a panel talking about uh, drug pricing and about policy changes that are going on. There was some great discussion going on among the panelists. Uh, what was your biggest takeaway from that discussion? Well, remember, here in San Francisco is where patient advocacy in many ways began. At the height of the AIDS crisis, patient advocates created what today is the fast track process. Engagement of patients on FDA panels all came out of advocacy. And what we talked about today is why there's a disconnect in people's understanding of the value of the medicines mm -hmm. and the cost structure around development, the cost structure around reimbursement, and the top line price, which often does not reflect what the manufacturer receives. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as, as part of that discussion, um, one of the discussions is with policymakers uh, in order to enable a lot of what, what, uh, what the industry uh, seeks to accomplish. Do you have a viewpoint on, on how uh, much energy, sh energy should go into communicating with policymakers uh, at the state level and in D.C. To, to help move some of this forward? Yeah, you know, Massachusetts is uh, blessed with a rich political dialogue, and Joe Kennedy in particular has shown that he's interested in engaging and understanding uh, what's happening in the industry. Remember, Ted Kennedy, as a senator, played a very important role in putting together some mm -hmm. of the framework for biologics, and it's hopeful that Joe will also be able to continue to create the policies in the landscape that allows biotech to flourish. Mm -hmm. uh, building off of that point, as the next generation comes into to Congress to dr try to drive some of these issues forward, uh, we have a new generation of people moving into science. And some of your comments in that panel were talking about inspiring the next generation of, of researchers coming in. What are your thoughts on that? Well, Bob Swanson always said, our most valuable assets go home at night in tennis shoes. <laughs> Because he always wanted to remind people it's young, innovative thinkers that make a difference of how we make discoveries. So for example, in our company, uh, we had a scientist come in and introduce a brand new technique called nanostring that enabled us for the first time to show that ELXO2 changed messenger RNA half-life, modulating the amount of messenger RNA in the cell, which is the basis for how proteins are being made. So if you think of that scientific insight, it was because he's a highly talented scientist, mm -hmm. but also came in with new thinking, and that's what makes our business dynamic and grow. Mm -hmm. So we're hopeful that when the best and brightest have a choice of what to do with their lives, they realize that biotech is a place they can make a difference. That's great. Uh, uh, get one final question. Uh, themes tend to emerge every year when we're here in San Francisco as the days go on, uh, and there are, there are so many issues being discussed, but are there any themes that have been emerging for you as you've been having conversations and, and meeting people here? 
Yeah, uh, high level of engagement. We know the markets are supportive because we've seen financial support for new offerings. We've also seen an introduction of a lot of new data. Many people have said there hasn't been a major M&A announced, but it's only late in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen. Everything can happen. Terrific. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. If you enjoyed the interview that you just saw, please click subscribe to the Biotech Showcase channel so you get notified when future interviews like this one come up. And thanks for enjoying our content.